Okay, welcome everybody. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Kim Perez-Holtz. I am the Director of Marketing and Outreach Relations here at the University of Hawaii at Manoa's College of Engineering. We are so excited to have you logging in, uh, taking time away from your busy schedules this evening to learn a little bit more about the college and learn about opportunities and just hear from some of our, our folks here. We've got staff, we've got our dean, we've got current students, as well as faculty to share their insights and experiences with you. We'll also have plenty of time for questions and answers. I'd like to start off by introducing our dean, Dean Brennan Morioka, for a welcome. Thanks, Kim. Aloha, everyone. Um, my name is Brennan Morioka. I'm the Dean for the College of Engineering here at UH Manoa. Uh, it's, it's so appreciative by us uh, that you're going to spend some time uh, here tonight. And then we have, again also have another session on Sunday morning uh, for those who would like to participate again or for others who couldn't make tonight. Um, you know, to, to hear you know, some of the things that, that we have to offer here at UH Manoa in the College of Engineering uh, and, you know, some of the experiences that can be shared by some of our students. Uh, you have uh, some of our talented faculty who you would be engaging with if you were to attend here. And I also appreciate the fact that we have some teachers and some parents uh, listening in as well. So, you know, we, we just want to make sure that you have all the information. I know uh, you are going through a very... Uh, important phase in your lives. I've gone through this myself recently with uh, my daughter just a year ago, and my two boys are seniors in high school as well. So they're going through exactly the same thing right now. And so I can under I understand how it is very much a family decision and a family conversation. So, uh, you know, we, we are here to help you uh, with uh, any kind of information you have. And but you know, I just want to say, uh, as a proud alumni of the University of Hawaii College of Engineering, uh, you know, we are extremely proud of our graduates, the kinds of experience that we offer to our students, um, and hopefully you'll, you'll hear some of that from our students themselves. Um, but, you know, our, our graduates from UH Manoa are some of the most competitive uh, and desirable uh, employees across, not just here in Hawaii, but across the country as well as internationally. So, uh, you know, your, your, your world, once you graduate here from UH Manoa is, is really limitless in terms of the kinds of opportunities, not just in the career opportunities, but the personal experiences where you can either stay here at home where I don't think that there is another institution across the country that would prepare you or expose you uh, to employers like we can here in Hawaii, uh, but also we, our, our graduates are in such demand across the country in all kinds of, of disciplines and industries that you, you really have um, tremendous opportunities right here in front of you that many of us in my generation really didn't have back when we were graduating. So I, I envy you for the, the situation or the position that you're in. And, you know, again, please listen in tonight. If you have questions, please feel free to ask it tonight. If not, there's always opportunities in the future to, to ask us after, uh, or you can always join us again on Sunday because you, you thought this tonight was such a great night. So I'm gonna turn it back to Kim, but, I'll be, I'll be here for the rest of the evening. So mahalo again for joining us. Thank you so much, Dean Morioka. All right, so now we're gonna be hearing from our Director of Student Services. She is also our lead academic advisor. So you'll definitely get to know this person if you start school here with us, Jill Nakatsu. And she's gonna be sharing some really important information about our program and what to expect. Jill. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, can you see the slides on screen right now? I think I have it open as a PDF. Um, looks okay? Okay, cool. So I'm Jill Nakatsu. I'm the Director of Academic Affairs for the College of Engineering. I am also an alumni of the program. Um, so uh, in electrical engineering. Um, so let me go ahead and share more with you about our college. Um, what is engineering? Uh, this slide is actually put together by our assistant dean. So there's a, some old school pictures on here, um, some science fiction and things like that. 
but truly engineering is all around us, right? Even in the science fiction. So even though some of these things were fictional a long time ago when these pictures were taken, um, you know, they stem from somebody's idea, somebody's thought about what could be better in the world, right? Um, what could be, what kinds of problems we could be solving for humanity and engineers make it happen, right? And that's what engineering is. It's using our science, our math, our, um, our technical backgrounds, right? To push technology forward to solve people's problems. So at the University of Hawaii at Manoa the College of Engineering, we have several different programs. Um, we have a civil engineering, construction engineering, computer engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and engineering science. And within some of those majors, um, we offer different concentrations so that you can focus on certain areas a little bit more so um, if you're interested in them. Um, our big three have the uh, bachelor's, master's, and PhD. So that's the civil, um, electrical, and mechanical. And the other ones we offer the bachelor's of science in right now. So these are the programs that you can um, be looking forward to if you would join us here um, at Manoa. Um, some quick facts about the College of Engineering. Our total enrollment at the moment, uh, this fall 22, is about 12,000 students, or a little over 12,000 undergraduate students. Um, on top of that, there are about 200 or so graduate students um, that, in, on top of that. And uh, within that 1,200, um, there's 241 pre-engineering students. Our average time to graduation is four and a half years to finish. And that's true kind of nationwide, yeah. Engineering is not an easy discipline. Um, and, you know, you start off right off the bat with some difficult math and things like that. And so sometimes students take a little bit longer because they need to spread it out to be able to handle the workload. Or you might be starting off in maybe a little bit lower math or need to repeat a course here or there. But on average, our students can finish four and a half years. We have students who finish in four and we have students who also finish faster than four. Um, so it's totally dependent on the situation. Our largest discipline at the moment is mechanical engineering. We have um, our student population is 21% female, and that kind of sits right at the national average too um, at the university. Our student to faculty ratio though is pretty good um, compared to a lot of other schools um, across the nation. Um, and we have some renowned faculty who win lots of awards and do really awesome things like Dr. Ota who's joined us here tonight and he'll be talking later. Okay, um, within the College of Engineering, we have some research areas, right, that our, our faculty have expertise in. Um, so biomedical, food, energy, water, structural, geotechnical, transportation, uh, material sciences, manufacturing, um, advanced wireless communications, cybersecurity, big data, data analysis kind of stuff, and autonomous vehicles. And um, next to each discipline, not discipline, but research expertise are the departments that address those um, those uh, areas. And so our electrical computer engineering department, um, our mechanical engineering department, civil and environmental department, and then one of the research departments, um, HATI, uh, covers these uh, research topics. So if you're interested in any of those areas or interested in any of the areas that sit on this slide here, um, you should consider an engineering major. Um, a lot of these different disciplines that are listed up here have career opportunities in Hawaii. And although, you know, you don't have a renewable energy engineering degree, right? It's these types of engineers that work in that area. So these are like a list of like the industries and the kinds of jobs that you could be getting as a civil engineer or a computer engineer, electrical engineer. And a lot of these um, uh, opportunities exist here in Hawaii too. They exist on the mainland as well, right? So if you had um, you, you know, dreams of going off and, and working elsewhere for a little while, get off the island, um, we can prepare you for that as well too with our majors. Okay, so what uh, kind of undergraduate opportunities can students get involved here at Manoa? Um, so Dr. Ota is probably gonna talk about it a little more later too, but there's a vertically integrated projects program here uh, where students will work on like multidisciplinary project-based research-based learning um, where they'll get involved with uh, 
other students, right? So it's all about teamwork and mentorship. Um, we have our freshmen, sophomores being mentored, right, by the juniors and seniors who may be also being mentored by graduate students. And of course, the faculty advisor for the project that oversees the research that's going on. So it's a really great opportunity to join us at Manoa to get involved in this kind of research as an undergraduate. There are schools um, elsewhere, right, that are, have very large graduate populations, graduate student populations. Um, and so the underclass, uh, the undergraduates don't get a chance to do as much research, right, or hands-on things with some of the professors. But here at Manoa, we have a relatively smaller graduate population. And so our undergrads get to take advantage of that, right, and get involved. And this VIP projects um, really let students learn more from each other um, about what, what they're doing. Um, in addition to that, if you have your own interest in things you wanted to research or develop, you can apply for like the undergraduate research opportunity program that provides funding for students to do different research projects. Um, we have community innovation mentorship program, so you can get involved in you know, projects and mentorship with the engineering community at large here in Hawaii. Um, the Breakthrough Innovation Competition is, and uh, PACE, which is the Pacific Asian Center for Entrepreneurship, um, are uh, programs from Scheidler, the College of Business here at Manoa that a lot of our engineering students get involved in because as engineers, right, um, you have the technical know-how to make a lot of products and processes come to life. And to be able to market that and become entrepreneurs is something you can go for. So maybe you don't want to work for one of those big companies. Maybe you want to work for yourself and you can develop that through these programs here. Um, capstone projects. Um, each of the disciplines requires a senior capstone project. Um, each department and major kind of runs their senior projects a little bit differently. Um, for example, I did an autonomous vehicle um, classification project with some of our computer engineering students a couple years ago, and now they work for Amazon doing some kind of similar work there too. Um, but there's all different kinds of capstone projects going on in the college, and you all have to do one to graduate. And then the student organizations and clubs also have projects. So they participate in like a lot of the national student competitions with other universities. We have things like the concrete canoe where civil engineers develop or create a canoe out of concrete and race it. We have the rainbow warrior racers or racing, um, which is um, some of the mechanical engineers and some of the other disciplines that put together a formula, like a scaled down formula one car, right? Um, from scratch and build those kinds of things and an e-vehicle too. Um, so these are some pictures off of our VIP uh, projects website. Um, again, we have a bunch of different kinds of multidisciplinary projects going on with faculty expertise from across our different departments, as well as some of our, um, our, our neighbors like uh, SOEST and um, the Hawaii Nat Natural Energy Institute uh, and uh, what is the other one? HSFL, the Hawaii Space Flight Laboratory. In addition to those research and project opportunities, there's a lots of scholarships um, going around. We have lots of money to give out each year. So if you join us here, we highly encourage you guys to apply for scholarships. A lot of them are engineering specific. So as a student in our college, you have access to all of this wonderful funding. Um, we also have um, and encourage internships, um, co-ops, felt fellowships and study abroad programs and our bachelor's and accelerated master's program. So if you want work experience, right, or to understand what, what engineers do on a day-to-day -day basis, getting involved in internships and co-ops are things that you can do that our current students are doing right now. Um, in the summer during the school year, you just have to apply. And we have a career fair every semester so that um, we can connect you guys with industry. And I have another slide on that a little later on. Um, our BAM pathways um, is a bachelor's and accelerated master's program. So the special thing about that is that you get to double count some of your undergraduate courses towards your graduate, um, your master's uh, curriculum. And so because of that double counting, uh, you're effectively taking less classes, right? To finish up your master's. So it can be done in an accelerated manner where some students are able to finish up a master's by just adding on like a year onto their undergrad. So really good opportunity to get through that. We also have a Native Hawaiian Science and Engineering Mentorship Program, NSEMP for short, uh, that provide um, 
you know, assistance and opportunities um, and try to build that Native Hawaiian and minorities and engineering community, right, to support each other uh, through, through uh, engineering and some of the science majors. Um, they provide academic and financial support so you can um, uh, join their, their program, get involved in things, um, go to some of the national conferences, and they can help to pay for those kinds of experiences uh, for you. Um, some of our engineering scholarships are listed up here on this slide. So again, we have a lot of them. This is just a handful of them. There are a ton more that you can be applying for, and we offer them every year. Yeah. So um, they open up in like November, December timeframe for, for application are usually due in kind of the mid-February timeframe as well. So that's a little bit more for our current students, but that's something to be aware of, right, if you join us. We have student athletes and students who collect many accolades. I think I have another slide on it. I guess I don't. Um, we have students who have won um, national awards for engineering um, and students who are uh, busy as engineers, but uh, become national champions, right? Um, with a volleyball team and things like that too. So even though you're an engineer, you can still have you know, other stuff to do, keep that balance. And of course, we encourage all of our students to join our different undergraduate clubs and projects. So these are an example of some of the projects and clubs uh, that we have here on campus. And I kind of mentioned the concrete canoe. That's that thing down in the bottom uh, right corner and our Rainbow Warrior racing team on the left hand side there. So um, because I think most of your high school students, right, our freshman admissions requirements are up here on the slide. We don't require standardized test scores because Manoa is not requiring them at the moment. Uh, so what we're looking for is B or better in these high school courses. Um, Pre-calculus, trigonometry, or calculus. Calculus preferred, yeah. If you can get up to calc, we highly, highly encourage it. Um, high school physics and high school chemistry or the AP versions of those things or the early college versions of those things are fine too. But we're looking for good grades there because those are the things you're gonna be learning right away um, when you jump into college. Our transfer admissions requirements. So some students may not want to start right away at Manoa, right? So maybe some of you um, uh, will need to start at maybe the community colleges because it is a viable route. Um, you know, it's less expensive, it's closer to home. Sometimes it's smaller campus is easier to adjust to before coming to a big four-year university. So our UH community colleges, we have a special agreement with them. Um, they offer what's called the ASNS in pre-engineering, which is basically our freshman sophomore curriculum but offered over there at their campuses. And if you finish that program over there, um, we will accept you to whichever engineering you wanna do with us to finish up the junior, senior year. So you can still be on that for your pathway, but just go to a, a mix of the schools. And if you end up going to a school outside of the UH community colleges, um, these are the requirements that we look for. These are the college level courses in our freshman curriculum that we wanna see that you did well in before you apply to Manoa Engineering. Um, this is a sample freshman uh, first year curriculum or um, first couple semesters. Uh, if you look at it, it, there's things like English and some histories, but the bulk of it is calculus. Calc 1, Calc 2, the first general chemistries, the first calc-based physics, um, all sit in that first year of, of engineering curriculum. And so what you want to do, right, to prepare yourself as freshman right now is to get yourself as close to cal calculus as you can, right? If you've seen calc in high school, it's gonna make this first semester easier on you. If you remember some of your chemistry from high school, it's gonna make that first semester easier on you. And of course, if you can take physics in high school, then you'll see the same kind of topics in college, but they'll be calculus based this time around when you take it with us. So give yourself that advantage, right? By paying attention to what you're doing now um, in high school um, and, uh, get involved in these kinds of classes. Um, beyond the freshman year, there are going to be the discipline specific courses, right? So the core courses from civil or mechanical, electrical, um, all of our different disciplines. And of course, there's built in design experience too. So those senior capstone design projects, as well as other um, design projects along the way uh, that you'll have to take as part of your curriculum. And uh, if you have an interest in some of these specialty areas, right, so biomedical engineering, sustainability engineering, renewable energy, aerospace, structural, we have concentrations and tracks built into our different engineering curriculums that will let you focus on those areas and take classes 
with the professors who know a lot about those things. And just to reiterate, um, this is a sample curriculum check sheet. That's the four-year plan in mechanical engineering um, up here on the screen. And if you look at that first semester, there's that Calc 1 class, Math 241, and there's that first general chemistry class, Chem 161. This is what we're hoping that you're going to be able to start with right away, but it's not guaranteed that you'll be able to start with it. You do have to do placement exams or maybe have AP scores high enough to place out of these classes. So like I said, right now, when you're in high school, you want to make sure that you're getting a good foundation in the things that come before calculus, right? The algebra, the pre-calculus, the trigonometry, because that's what's going to have you pass the placement to get into Calc 1 right away. So you don't have to start in pre-calc and take longer to graduate. And same thing for chemistry. Too. Um, so in our college, the other kinds of services that we provide um, or different things you can get involved in. Um, we have MIX, Study Abroad, and NSC. So that are those are different international and national exchange programs. So you're, if you're from Hawaii, right, and you um, wanted to get some experience away, you can stay here at Manoa to do your degree, but you can go away for a semester or a year, get experience in another country or in another um, US um, you know, university and stuff if you wanted to. We've had students who have gone to all sorts of different states across the US. Um, as well as Japan, Australia, Sweden, France, Korea, um, and have taken engineering courses that counted towards a degree here. So, you know, it's not like you're going to fall super behind by going away. You're just going to have a good experience of seeing how people do engineering and teach classes at elsewhere. Um, our career expo, we have one each semester. This is how a lot of our students find their first internships and their first full-time employment as well. And we encourage all of our students to go to those things. We usually get well, like around, you know, like 80 or 90 uh, different companies, right, that come down um, both locally and from the mainland uh, to recruit our students. Because as Dr. Morioka was saying, right, um, our students are in high demand everywhere. Uh, you'll get uh, advising from engineering faculty. So if you need guidance on your academics, you have questions about research or career opportunities, you can ask us about it. Um, and then there's tutoring for our tougher courses, right? The math sciences, the engineering classes um, are tutored by uh, the different tutoring centers as well as our engineering honor societies too. And if you're interested in doing other things alongside engineering, uh, a lot of students will consider doing things like the math minor or the business minor, um, the language minors and things like that. And if you really, really want to get into it, you can also consider a double major. Um, you just want to talk to us about it first because it's a lot of work <laughs> to do that kind of thing. But you're more than welcome to try. Right? And that's it for my talk. Uh, I tried to speed through that so everybody else gets a chance to talk. Um, so I guess I'll turn it back over to Kim and you will be hearing from some of our faculty and students next. Thank you so much, Jill. That was a lot of wonderful information. I will also be emailing out the presentation as well as this recording to everyone who registered for this session. So don't worry if you didn't take notes, you'll have all this in your inbox. At this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Aaron Ota. He is, he may look young, but he is actually one of our most decorated faculty, um, really a rising shining star here at the college. And he actually started as a local boy at uh, Kalani High School. And he has some great experiences to share both as a student, as well as a professor with us, as well as the head of one of our premier programs at the college that allows students to get real world experience, hands-on experience while they're actually earning college credit. So I will pass over the floor to Dr. Ota to talk story with you. Thanks, Kim, for that introduction. So uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so yeah, my name is Aaron Ota. I'm as Kim said, I'm a Kalani grad. Do we have any Kalani students uh, in the audience tonight? I know we. I saw at least one Kalani email register. So, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I graduated from there before you were born, so it's been a little while. Um, but I, but I did go to, uh, you know, Kalani. So I'm kind of representing both the student pathway because after Kalani. Uh, I got my, my bachelor's degree um, from the Department of Electrical Engineering uh, at UH. Uh, and I'm also representing the, the faculty uh, aspect because uh, after I, I graduated 
uh, from UH. Uh, I went on to grad school uh, at UCLA and UC Berkeley. Uh, and then I applied back to UH and, and was hired as a faculty member. Um, so I have kind of both perspectives uh, if you're interested in that. Um, one thing I'd like to share is that uh, your, your high school teachers are doing a much better job of this, um, of teaching what, what engineering is, is about um, compared to when I was a student. Uh, when I uh, started at UH, I didn't really know too much about uh, what engineers did. Um, I just figured it was one of the harder majors to get into, so I could always switch if I wanted to. Uh, but what I did do is I got involved in a robotics project in my very first semester at UH. And that really got me, allowed me to see what engineers do and got me hooked um, on engineering. And, and that, you know, is what, what captured my interest and made me stick with this as a major. So I really encourage all of you to, to uh, get some kind of experience like that, where you get involved in an engineering project early on um, when you start your college career. A very good avenue for that is the vertically integrated projects program that was mentioned. Um, but we also have, as Jill uh, talked about, we also have many other opportunities for, for various kinds of projects. And that can really uh, help you to see what engineers do and, and you know um, that it's an exciting profession to be in. Uh, some of my uh, former VIP uh, students, so students that have worked on, on vertically integrated projects that, that I've advised, um, they're now at places like, you know, uh, Apple, uh, Intel, uh, Amazon, uh, and other students at Blue Origin, which is Amazon's rocket company, uh, you know, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, those are all in the mainland, but there's a lot of students that have all uh, have uh, jobs locally too, uh, such as at uh, HECO, um, uh, various uh, divisions within Pearl Harbor um, and a lot of other local companies. There's a, there's a lot of small, smaller local companies that are also doing very good work. Um, so that's kind of uh, my background. Um, and I'm happy to share uh, more about that and more about um, questions that you would have for a faculty member. Um, but I would like to turn it over to our students who you are probably more interested in talking to. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Ota. We have two students here, actually members of our student ambassador team, who I would like to introduce. So we have Khaldun Ishmael and Mia Kasparian. They're both current students at the college. They have really unique journeys and stories, and I thought it might be of benefit for you folks to hear about those stories and, and be able to learn a little bit from their experiences. So. First off, we're going to hear from Khaldun Ishmael, who is actually now a PhD student, soon to be graduate in our electrical engineering program. And he's worked his way all the way up from the ground up. So let's hear from Khaldun. Thank you. All right, let me share my screen. It's going to take a little bit of time. Anyway, so uh, aloha, everyone. My name is Kaldun Ishmael, and uh, I'm a PhD student um, majoring in electrical engineering. Uh, I'm originally from Iraq. I'm a US Army veteran. I've been deployed to overseas. I moved to Hawaii from the mainland uh, in 2012. I live in Kapolei with my wife and my dog, Bob Mali. Okay. So, um, as Kim said, uh, I start from my ground. I start from the Leeward Community College um, because, first of all, it's close to me because I live in Kapolei. So, the commute was like too much. So, I chose to go to Leeward. And it's not a bad college, it's a community college. Uh, they are very good over there. So I finished over there in 2015, and right away, automatic uh, transfer, they call it, um, I get admitted to uh, UH Manoa College of Engineering, and I finished, uh, I graduate in 2017 with bachelor, and right away, I know what I'm, like, I want to, like, go to grad school, so right away, I went to grad school, um, and uh, I finished grad school in 2018, 
Um, this is me and my advisor, uh, Dr. Olga Lebecki. And hopefully in 2020, which is this year, I will be finished my PhD. I will be bold and maybe like this guy, white. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so College of Engineering, UH Manoa College of Engineering, it's offered a lot of research, a lot of programs. Uh, in my undergrad, I did a lot of research. I involved with a lot of uh, program that College of Engineering, they, they have um, like uh, renewable energy, um, a drone, sensors. So that's why um, in my undergrad. So, and then all these um, the research qualify me or give me a hint like, okay, I wanna do something when I like in my grad my graduate school. So in my master, I did my, I did like a semiconductor fabrication on quantum dot, and um, in right like I fin uh, as I said I finished it in one year and a half, and then right away I went to PhD and I switched to uh, radio frequency biosensor, which is like what we're doing is non in in invasive physiological monitor for heart and respiratory rate. So during my school, um, I get a lot of internship, a lot of experience, uh, like as I listed right here, like this is through like a college of engineering or also through like um, knowing people and talk to people within the college of engineering. So I got an internship um, at the US Army Hospital and uh, another internship at the uh, Corp of Engineering and uh, 2017, I applied for U uh, UH Manoa grant, and I get they they gave it to me um, because you know they have as as Joe says, college engineering has a lot of money, but the students need to apply for it. They need to you know write up and talk about themselves, uh, so they could get that you know um, scholarship and internship. Um, uh, in 2017 and 18, uh, I got an internship with the Navy. That's all through, like, you know, involved in some research. They approach me and say, you want to be, you want to have an internship with us? I was like, yeah, what, let me, yeah, let, I will get it. And um, in 2019, I got another scholarship. It's called uh, Help a Hero Scholarship. Also, I applied for it. Uh, in 2019, uh, I got a like um, a scholarship uh, called a Smart Scholarship, which is they fund my PhD right now. And uh, 2021, um, I got a, a Frederick um, Kaiser uh, Arc um, um, kind of like award for a student who dedicated for college engineering. And uh, 2021, I got um, the DoD Smart Scholarship, which is um, kind of like um, a nationwide uh, awards. So all this, like, um, thanks for, for like involvement in research and talking to people and uh, college of engineering, of course, like helped me to do all this um, uh, achievement. So um, again, um, during my college of engineering, I am a member of IEEE. And also, I've been a member in Native Hawaiian Science and Engineering uh, Mentorship. Um, college of Engineering is just not study and like have hard time. Also, like you having fun and you could like make a in, like a friendship. You could go out and you know it, it's it's like you are, yes you study all the time, but also you could have fun. It's not all time study study. Believe me. So I play soccer with with some you know guys when the terminus you know soccer terminus. Um, I love fishing. Um, this is my dog. I treat you know I try to teach him some you know engineering stuff, but he's like, what what are you talking about? <laughs> and uh, I I I like to go to um, Starbucks and drink coffee and we study together. This is one of the good things that um, I get during my engineering is friendship. And you can study with different disciplines. This is my friend Rina, she's civil engineering. And so you could study with different groups. You don't have to be studied with the same group. So college engineering is a lot of um, people you could meet and make a lot of friendship with them. Um, so that's pretty much about me. And um, yeah, uh, you guys like uh, my advice to the, any students who come here is to, to get like uh, advantage, to get advantage from the like what College of Engineering at Manoa offer to students. And um, there is a lot of uh, research, there is a lot of topics you could involve with. 
and really uh, it helps you for future uh, career and you could exceed um, if you want to stay here or you could go mainland or you could go like overseas, whatever you could go. Um, college of Engineering, they teach you the fundamental to be very successful engineering. And that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Khaldun. Okay, next up, we're going to hear from Mia, one of our current undergraduate students, as well as a student ambassador. Mia. Okay. Here, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Perfect. So hello, everyone. My name is Mia. I grew up in Michigan and graduated from St. Clair High School in 2020. Ever since I was little, my family and I visited the islands every chance we got. And in seventh grade, my parents actually bought our house on the Big Island. Um, my parents actually moved to the Big Island my junior year in high school while I stayed in Michigan to finish high school and graduate. Um, I'm now a current junior majoring in electrical engineering on the electrophysics track with a biomedical concentration. So to give you guys an insight into student life, here are some pictures of my freshman year dorm view in um, Lokalani, which is one of the Aloha Towers for the freshmen. I was on the honors reserved floor and I can't complain about the view at all. Um, during my sophomore and current junior year, I got the same dorm, which I lived on campus still in Wainani. And my favorite part is that we get our own kitchen where I've learned how to cook, as you can see in the bottom right. And we get our own living room and bathroom, which is a huge plus. And then here's also one of my favorite studying spots on campus, which is actually in Holmes Hall, which is the College of Engineering building. Outside of school, I'm involved in IEEE, Society of Women's Engineering, and was a part of the Society of Humanitarian Sustainability Engineering Club. And outside of school too, I also love snorkeling, skydiving, axe throwing, hiking, and rock climbing. I've had a couple of on-campus jobs. I worked as the alumni relations student assistant, and now I work as one of the engineering student ambassadors. And I'm also a STEM tutor and mentor at Castle High School. And as Joe mentioned earlier, there are vertically integrated projects, VIPs. And in my sophomore year, I joined Dr. Otha's micro VIP and was a part of the Embryos Interior Group. Our goal was to utilize neural networks to automate measurements of embryos growth weight rates in hopes to make the IVF process more efficient and reliable. And then this year, I am starting to work under Dr. Ray to develop wireless wearable electrochemical sensing pro platforms. And here's actually a picture of me testing the device last week, where we just had to sit on a bike and just try to sweat as much as possible for the device to work, which is pretty fun. And yeah, thank you for listening. All right, thank you so much, Mia. At uh, this time, we are going to open up the floor to you, our attendees. I know we have students, parents, and possibly some educators in the audience. Um, feel free to turn on your cameras. We'd love to see you. You can unmute yourself and jump in and ask any question of any of our speakers. You can also type your questions in the chat if you prefer. We also have some pre-submitted questions, so we'll go to those, um, but we'd love to take any audience questions first. So feel free to jump in. I know you must have some questions. All right. Well, while you folks are thinking of uh, your questions or building up courage to ask, we'll jump in and ask a couple of our pre-submitted questions of the panel. And anybody can go ahead and provide some insight or take a stab at these. But let's start off with how would you describe the culture of learning at the College of Engineering? This can be from a student, staff, or faculty perspective. Who would like to tackle this one?
Jill, would you like to start off? Uh, I was going to say students. You guys are the ones learning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> How would you describe the culture of learning at the College of Engineering? Oh, um, is collaborative, is it competitive? And maybe a few examples. From my perspective, it's not competitive at all. It's all collaborative. We're all studying, sometimes struggling together, which creates kind of a sense of community. We have like an engineering lounge you can go to in one of our buildings post and like you can all meet up with your friends and have study sessions. And it's very like nice to feel supported with like other classmates and everything. And, and also the unique about College of Engineering at Manoa that you develop um, a friend like kind of like a relationship with your with your uh, professors so you could ask them a question anytime you want you don't have to like you know you know like the mainland colleges you have to like make appointments all these things you wait two days three days no they are very very interactive with the students they they, they help you right away so this is one of the best things you could you could like you will feel it when you come to the college of engineering From, from a faculty perspective, like we highly encourage students to work together, right? Right, Aaron? Um, because uh, when students work together, they reinforce their, their understanding of the material. And so we want, we want our students to work together so that they get that, that deeper understanding and can do well in the classes. And from when I was a student way back when, same thing as what Mia is saying, that's how it felt back then too. Um, working with other people was just what I did all the time. Uh, late nice nights in post and in home tall and everything, uh, eating candy and wondering where did all the candy go? Because <laughs> we've been here for hours <laughs> studying together. But <laughs> nice. Thanks, Bob. And I would I would just add, you know, because Mia kind of touched upon it, you know, in, in terms of um, studying together and, and relying on other students. It's, it's that relationships, those relationships that you build while you're in school, because if your, if your thought is that you're going to want to be an engineer in Hawaii after graduation or at any point in your career, the majority of engineers who work in Hawaii are UH grads. And the beauty of that is that you cannot, you don't just rely on each other just getting through school. You end up relying on each other throughout your career in your professions. And it becomes very easy to do work in Hawaii because, you know, in, in Hawaii, the way we do business is relational, right? It's not transactional like the mainland. We're very relationship based. And if you have somebody that you went to school with who is now a branch chief or a director at a department or at a local company, they're an executive, it's so easy to just pick up the phone and call to help, you know, resolve issues or whatever it is. And so those relationships you build in school, in college here at UH is going to last you a lifetime throughout your profession. And so I think that is really the beauty of, of what UH offers to, to many of our students. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And one of my other questions was about what makes our school unique. And I think that really touched upon that already. Now we do have a couple of questions coming in now. So let's take care of those. One is admissions focused. I know the SAT is not required. However, does it help? Uh, no. Um, so, I mean, you can you can turn it in and everything, uh, but to be fair, right, across the board and, and um, when we're making the admissions decisions, uh, when I'm looking at the applications, uh, I treat everybody the same. So, because we say that we're looking at the high school grades and those high school courses, that's what we're looking for. So, um, if you did well on it, it doesn't hurt, <laughs> for sure. Um, and even uh, the SATs can help to place you in a uh, a higher level math and everything too, without having to do the Manoa's placement exam. So it might be worthwhile to still consider taking it. Um. Thanks, Joe. Okay, our next question. A year ago, I heard from a coworker whose son attends UH that at times it is difficult to get into the required classes due to so many students being in the program. Is this true for many classes? She told me that story in relation to a specific math class that engineering students need to take. Good question. 
I, I guess I'll take that one and then maybe the students can kind of jump in if they have experience with that too. Um, so enrollment has been uh, kind of jumping through the roof the past uh, year or two. Um, and so uh, our departments have kind of had to scramble to, to provide enough classes. Um, but it seems like at this point um, now, it is still a little bit of a struggle right off the bat, but the departments are able to hire instructors and, and open up more sections for courses. So sometimes it requires a little bit of patience um, and perseverance. Um, once the departments sort of catch up with that, then there are more sections and then students have to just go back in and sign up for it. There are on occasion students who just kind of give up on it and say, oh, well, it's all full now. And yeah, the departments are working on it, but I don't know. So then they never look back at it and they don't get in. Um, but if students are running into issues getting into classes, you know, that's what we're here for too, to kind of help um, provide different options and try to figure out different ways to get through that. Sometimes it's dropping a different course to add the class that has an open seat in it, you know, a different time section um, and finding something else to take instead of that other class. So we can kind of work our, navigate our way through the system, right? To, to help you figure out how to get the important things you need and kind of push around the other classes that are a little bit more flexible or even um, sometimes take some things at the community colleges because you guys have access to all of those campuses as well. Um, and they're providing both in-person and, and online classes too at those campuses. That's great, thanks, Jill. And I, I mean, I more? guess just to, just to add on that, that because Jill is talking primarily about the lower division, you know, freshman, sophomore year classes that are more what we call general education. Because um, once you get into your actual engineering courses, the, th the your junior and senior years, um, you know, those are, you know, much easier for you to get in because those are very specific to engineering students. Um, and, and we do kind of try to design it so that we can accommodate all of the students in that year uh, to take the classes. So once they're in their upper, upper level, upperclassmen courses, they can st stay on track. But, you know, the, 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 struggle with getting into general education classes is not a UH phenomenon. It, it's, you see it at every single university across the country uh, because everybody is trying to, regardless of major, they're trying to take some of the same classes. And actually the larger the school, the more difficult it becomes oftentimes. So I think UH, especially to Jill's point about having community college um, colleges that are available for for us to take classes that are that are counted towards your general education, uh, it it provides you with different kinds of opportunities and options uh, while here at UH Manoa. Also, from a student's perspective, um, one of the reasons why I joined the honors program is that we do get to register, like I think like one or like three days before like normally I could. And then, so if you can join the honors program or if you're a UH athlete, you also can register a little bit earlier. That always helps. And then I always mark down on my calendar, like the date and time that registration opens. And I wake up if I need to exactly at the time and have everything planned out before. So I can just hit like submit to register for the classes. And I plan everything out before, which helps a lot. Good advice, Mia. Treat it like that Bruno Mars concert, right? You want to be the first one in, get prime uh, prime selection. So thank you guys. We get another question here in the chat. If we did math 241 and math 242 in high school, are we required to take them anyway freshman year? Nope. Once you have college credit uh, for those classes, you have college credits and they last forever. So um, if you took early college, Math 241 and 242 at like uh, the community colleges or you took them in summer here in Manoa, then that's all, you're all good to go. You do have to have the appropriate grades to move on, right? So you wanna make sure those are both C or better uh, so that you can get into those next subsequent classes. Um, and if you didn't, you'd have to retake them. That would be the only reason to have to retake uh, it at that point. Um, or if you earned AP, uh, those courses through AP credit, uh, that's fine too. Thanks, Joe. Another question for the panel pre-submitted. What advice do you have for a current high school student hoping to excel at the College of Engineering? So how they can how can they set themselves up for success?
I'll, I'll give the boring answer and then you guys give all the, the good answers after. Um, so my, my, my regular answer, right, is uh, while in high school, um, if you want to have success with the classes that you're going to jump into right away, like I said, you want to get up to the highest level math that you can. So you want to go uh, and make sure you get a solid, solid, solid foundation in pre-calculus, trigonometry, um, and, and regular and calculus. Um, the stats, not as necessary, um, like AP stats, you want to go for AP calc, yeah? Um, because those are the things you're going to do right away and you're going to do forever. They're, they show up in all your classes down the line, pretty much. Um, the chemistry is something that a lot of students take in sophomore year, but you have to do a chem placement exam right when you get here <laughs> to sign up for your chem class. So you want to not forget your chemistry, um, take good notes, right, during sophomore year, keep your textbook or whatever, and be able to study up for it, right, in senior year before you have to jump in over here. And that's like the straightforward answer with the classes. But there's a lot of other things you can do to set yourself up for success uh, as a college student in engineering and at Manoa. But I'm going to let other people talk about that. Because I'm sure you guys have stuff to say, right? Um, for me, um, um, the successful, like, what made me successful during my undergrad is studying with, with, the, with the group. Um, it was like the best thing to do, uh, study with a friend um, all the time. And uh, it's because you need motivation to stay, you know, for to study for a long time, to do homework. Um, so that's the motivation you get when you study with a friend. And um, times go so like, times goes by and you do all your homework. And um, that's what, you know, my successful key, make a, make a friend, don't be study by yourself. Um, for me in high school, I remember, I feel like the faster you learn how to like organize all your due dates and everything and like get a calendar or planner, whether it's digital or like a physical copy helps a lot to keep everything organized. Cause like your senior year and junior year are hectic with everything in high school. And then making all your applications and due dates and everything. And even in your undergraduate, like I use my planner every day and I have to look at it. And the faster you learn what organization, organization system works best for you, I think that could help a lot going into your freshman year because it's all crazy with due dates. And I, I would just add also, you know, because we get as engineers, we get so focused and pigeonholed on the math and the science in terms of the skill sets that engineers need, which is basically our language, right? So, so there's, there's no way around being competent and good at physics, chemistry, biology, calculus. There's no way around that. You gotta be good at it. <clears throat> but um, today's engineers also need to be far more than just uh, book smart on the on the STEM aspects. You really, people in today's communities really need engineers to be far more well-rounded. And so focusing and practicing it while still in high school, because you're going to have to do it in college, especially if you start doing some of our student projects, um, is learning the communication skills, right? Written language, spoken language, being able to speak well, uh, and not just to other engineers, but to the, to the general public, to the, av the average everyday person on the street, you got to be able to communicate with them. Leadership skills, you know, and that's a lot of what, a, what some of our student projects and the VIP that, that Dr. Ota is, it helps to lead for the college, um, really helps to teach and enhance many of those skill sets that are critical um, uh, in, in your careers, not just getting through college, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to serve you well throughout your entire career. And, it, and, and that's also what helps set engineers apart is, is our ability to communicate very difficult concepts uh, to everybody else. So work, I would, I would suggest working on that. You know, don't be afraid to get up, get up front in front of your class and give a speech or something or, or make sure you practice writing good papers, not just technical papers, but just good everyday papers. So. I, I think everyone has uh, given great advice. Um, 
if I could just add one more thing, would it would just be to uh, take an active part in your education. So like I like, you know, was mentioned, you know, seek out some projects on something that you're interested in. Uh, if you don't understand something in class, you know, speak up, go talk to your professor at your professor's office hours. Um, and, you know, it's, it's easy to be uh, kind of passive. No one's telling you what to do. No one, no one even is forcing you to go to classes. Um, but if, you know, you take a really active part in your education, um, that will go very far. Yeah, I was hoping someone would say that too. But my, my last thing would just be ask. Don't be afraid to ask. That's the one thing that I didn't do right away that I wish I had done more of when I was a, a freshman. Great advice, you guys. And yeah, when things don't go your way, right, take the bull by the horns and really make use of the resources made available to you because that's what engineers do. They problem solve, right? So put that into action. Okay, we have time for maybe one more question. If anyone has anything burning they'd like to ask, I'll throw it in the chat. In the meantime, I would love to hear just a little bit about your folks' thoughts on after graduation. Now, we all know students are coming to the College of Engineering not just for a good time, for four or four and a half years, they're coming to get a degree so they can begin their career as professional engineers. Let's just talk for a moment about some of the most common jobs and biggest employers that our students work for after graduating. And maybe if there's a graduate or two, you folks want to highlight and talk about um, that have an interesting path, feel free to jump in and share that. I guess I'll, I'll start with that one. Um, so, you know, our, our in Hawaii, our primary industry is obviously construction, right? Construction is one of our three economic drivers in our state. And uh, so a lot of our a lot of our civil engineering graduates obviously stay home and work for consulting firms. So they they do civil design um, that leads to construction. Uh, so you can either work in in design or you can go into construction. Work for many of our our large contractors or small contractors. Uh, our, our graduates are always in very, very high demand by all of our companies and our contractors. Um, and that's on the civil engineering side. Or you can, there's, there's a lot of work in the government sector too, both city, state, and uh, federal level, right? Because US Army Corps of Engineers, Pearl Harbor Shipyard, NAVFAC, um, Air Force, or you can work for the state DOT, Department of Accounting and General Services, or any of the public works for the counties, they're always looking for, for um, engineers. There's always a shortage of engineering and in the very all wide range of fields. Um, in the mechanical and electrical side, uh, there's, there's less uh, than in civil, but there is a, a growing market. There is a growing sector of, of, of tech firms, of computer engineering firms, cybersecurity, uh, growing demand in biomedical engineering, um, especially in, in working with the hospitals and physicians on, uh, you know, on, on medical devices, surgical instruments, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we're, we're very optimistic about that, the growth and the opportunities that exist for many of you, because there's, there's still four or five years before you'll be out there in, in the workforce. And the, the pace that I see uh, some of these sectors that are currently still growing, uh, it is growing at a much more rapid, rapid rate. So those kinds of opportunities uh, are out there. But, you know, like I mentioned earlier, many of our graduates are very much in high demand by many of the mainland um, firms, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, Boeing, LinkedIn, Amazon, uh, Microsoft, you know, you name it, all these top firms are, are all over our graduates because uh, our, our graduates are our best marketing tools, right? They go to these firms and then they excel and they perform well. And now all these companies want more. And so we do have a lot of them showing up at our career fair, which we just had a couple of weeks ago, um, had almost a hundred firms there looking for our graduates. And that's another thing that we, we, we put you in front of all of these uh, employers twice a year 
and they come because they're they're very interested in hiring our graduates. So uh, a lot of opportunities, different kinds. That's why we also encourage our, our students to work in internships while they're in school because you know you're still trying to figure out what you want to do upon graduation and you don't really know. Um, and so just kind of sampling working in different environments, a small firm, big firm, local firm, mainland firm. Some firms even hire our students for summer internships on the mainland. So you can get a taste of what it's like to live on the mainland and work there. Uh, so all kinds of opportunities. And, and we always encourage our students to diversify, right? Find, find that experience, that working experience that fits you and what you're gonna be passionate about. Just don't take any old job because it's offered to you. Take one because it's a, it's a good fit where you're gonna find that passion and you're gonna know you're gonna succeed. Adding into that real quick, uh, we have, uh, uh, or I guess I should say where I work too. So after I graduated undergrad here at Manoa, I, I worked for a company called Medtronic on the mainland. So I used to work on cardiac and neural devices, um, biomedical instrumentation and stuff. Um, but we also have students who go a little bit more of a non-traditional route, right? So we have our undergraduate engineers finish up their program and head off to law school, head off to med school and do those kinds of things too. So if you're interested in like patent law, right? As an engineer, we've had students who've gone on to like UH Law School, but also to like Columbia Law School and lots of different places. Um, I had a classmate of mine, he's a, he's a doctor now. Um, and so he did his undergrad and his MS in electrical engineering and then went off to job so and became a medical doctor. Um, and I'm sure he incorporates some technology kind of things in, in some of his clinical research and stuff like that too. But um, our students, uh, you know, with your engineering degree, the sky's the limit. Uh, you get a lot of management sort of experience too, right? Leadership, project management. So we've had students who've gone on to um, manage very large hotels in Waikiki <laughs> and, and things like that. So all different kinds of things are open to you um, when you finish out last finish up with us because of the problem solving, the critical thinking, all of those things that you develop, yeah, as an engineer along the way. Great, thank you, Joe. Anyone else wanna add some last minute advice before we wrap up or thoughts to the career elements? No, all right. Well, I wanna thank everybody for joining us this evening. I know we're at time, we're a couple of minutes over. Thank you to our panel and thank you most of all to you, our attendees. We hope you learned a lot and please tell your friends. We have a session on Sunday morning, nine to 10, bright and early. So you have the rest of the day ahead of you. You're welcome to come back on and join us if you'd like to soak up more of the information that you heard tonight or ask additional questions. And again, please tell any of your classmates or friends to join us if they weren't able to make it today. Um, I just want to add, we do have events on campus throughout the year as well that we would love you to partake in, depending on where you are in your year of study. We have actually a high school internship program that will be running next summer for any rising seniors next year. We will be opening the applications in early 2023. So check our website out for more details on that. We also have, if we have any middle schoolers on here, we have a middle school engineering showdown in the spring. We also have a big open house, Manoa Experience, where we invite you to come into our labs and talk to our staff and faculty and all kinds of things. So check out our website, add yourself to our mailing list, and we'd love to have you on campus. Thank you so much, folks. Have a wonderful evening, and we hope to see you soon. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>